Here is Abhishek. Good morning once more. This is uh, to be a course on BW6 and BWC overview for a brief introduction. So as I was saying, so I've been working in this uh, Tipco stack for a long time, uh, around 12 years. So I've been working in BW5, BW6, then C, and uh, specifically on the cloud uh, side of deployment. And I also got uh, certified and recertified this year. Uh, again on 6 and C and Tipco Cloud. So basically that's uh, my basic intro. This course, this is uh, around uh, my, will be my eight, eighth batch. Official count of classes would be around 30 is, uh, 35 is the minimum uh, amount of hours that uh, we are targeting at, but usually uh, to cover the course material, both for BW6 and C, we would require uh, 35 but around uh, more likely to be around 40 classes so going through the overview first of all like thing uh, what i uh, take for granted is that uh, even though you have exposure or you may or may not have exposure to tipco 5 tipco bw6 or c or you may not have any exposure to tipco as well so we have uh, students from uh, with various levels of experience together in our sessions so what i uh, usually take as a base starting point or a standpoint is that uh, i assume zero exposure of the participants to tipco to any type of tipco products and we start from scratch so whatever be your level of experience with tipco or with bw uh, integration in general so it won't be and uh, any sort of hindrance for you to understand or learn this product hands-on. Uh, that said, the way we are going to approach uh, this course is through uh, a combination of theoretical and uh, practical classes, but more uh, like I would like to stress on the hands-on part of it rather than on the theoretical part. So we are going to learn the concepts anyways, but that we are going to learn through the specific hands-on. So like the retention is better, like you can understand better and uh, whatever courses you have, we can interact and solve them in the class itself. So going through the, uh, like, uh, as I said, like uh, the overview. So we have a sequence where we uh, usually cover the development part uh, first. So, this uh, typical bw6 and bwc the development is uh, more or less on a similar lines so if you uh, if i show you the studios uh, it's basically using the same uh, business studio at the back end for both bw6 and c so the development part is 95% uh, similar but uh, the difference occurs when it comes to the deployment part so on deployment part, uh, since we have two products, so BW6 is used for uh, the app space and the app node deployment. That is basically to say the on-premise deployment, while the BWC product is used mainly for the cloud-based de uh, deployment. So that can be a private cloud, that can be a public cloud, or uh, that can be on Tipco's own cloud integration platform. So these uh, deployment uh, procedures and the deployment uh, steps these will differ for bw6 and c and like it involves a number of concepts as well so what we are going to do is uh, we are usually take up the uh, development part first of both bw6 and c together so like as i said like 95 percent of the development part is same it will continue parallelly uh, wherever there are differences between six and c i'll point that out but basically the development uh, sessions would go on together so once the development sessions are done we usually take up uh, the bw6 deployment first cover that and then move on to the bwc deployment so for uh, like uh, the bwc deployment as i said like c is used more for the cloud deployment so just uh, learning uh, the BW concepts will not be enough for the BWC deployment part. So for deployment part, since we're going to deploy on cloud and uh, that involves um, a few other non tipco concepts as well. Like uh, say, for example, we need to understand what is Docker, 
how docker base like the basics of docker like how to install uh, how to best use the basic commands which are required for our purpose what is an uh, image then like how to con convert an um, application into an image and then deploy so these things and also like uh, how what are the commands for orchestrating the cloud platform so we take uh, the docker as the container medium and uh, aws as the container as a basic cloud platform so like how to um, orchestrate uh, or like how to push your uh, image after once it is created in docker to your cloud environment to aws and like how to set that up how to check in that portal so these things uh, we cover as an add-on part for bwc because like uh, without these parts learning only the tipco will not help you uh, being an end-to-end -end developer okay uh, so this is it and uh, like uh, also like as i said like the sessions are more uh, interactive and the course uh, like i will share a set of slides i have a set of slides which i'll refer uh, for each session and at the end of this session i'll share those slides with you but uh, the content of the session is uh, not hard coded okay but not hard bound so that would mean uh, like if there's a scope for uh, like uh, improvements based on uh, the ba general batch feedback so like say uh, we i a scenario i frequently face is that uh, say i've got to do subtopic uh, as per my sequence but then uh, suddenly some of the participants may have interviews coming up or may urgently require some uh, like a concept uh, required for their own project purpose which we have not covered yet so we take the detour and uh, like i covered those topics also like whatever is needed to uh, like help the students or like say during the hands-on if the students require some specific scenarios to be demonstrated so i do that too but that like as i said like uh more or less like the class course will uh, depend on the uh, like student feedback rather than uh, my being uh, using a hard structured uh, template for the uh, sessions okay so it's more of an interactive way where i interact with students and like whatever feedback i get based on that whatever requirements the students have i'll try to like to tailor the course in that way okay and uh, one other thing so like based on and another again like based on the batch uh, inclination so sometimes we have batches which are more inclined to learn the product itself for uh, like working in projects some of them uh, want to learn that like uh, for clearing interviews and like move is changing tracks from other tracks to tipco <clears throat> and in for those people like it's uh, very vital to get tipco certified now tipco has uh, like changed their uh, certification modes in the recent times so this year onwards they are uh, till june for each quarter they have had one uh, certification drive for a day uh, in case your organization is uh, tipco's partner uh, so like you can you know, like each quarter they assign a certification day for which you get a particular code based on your organization and you can use that code to take up any number of tipco certifications both the basic certifications as well as the professional certifications for free even if like uh, your organization is not a part of uh, tipco not a uh, partner of tipco even then you can take the exams up uh, on your personal um, uh, like on your own uh, interest and for like those if you're planning to take up uh, tipco certifications then i'll like uh, try to uh, like pro uh, provide some uh, like guidance uh, based on like whatever questions frequently come based on my experience like i attended both this uh, april certification drive this year as well as the june certification drive so i know like what is the latest trend of questions so i'll uh, direct you in that manner as well but like as i said like it's uh, totally depends on the batch uh, like feedback so like if they want they if they are more interested in learning the product only then that would be it or if they want to go for certification as well then like we can plan for that as well okay 
so that's about like uh, um, uh, in a nutshell a basic of like a basic overview of the course so if you have any questions till now please feel free to ask yeah my question is like how we can uh, uh, like uh, deploy that code container edition uh, like uh, if you have access of cloud you can do but how and if any people are doing that training how they can deploy it? Okay. is it free or uh, it is open source how right so as i said like uh, i like choose docker as the container platform and uh, like aws as the like the cloud platform okay so basically like the choice of this is first of all this is these two are like the most popular uh, technologies uh, and secondly like both of them the docker is uh, free for like download you can download the docker uh, utilities and you can install that and get started on your own secondly aws uh, offers you uh, one year free tier uh, membership so you can register with your details your credit card number and you'll get an, uh, a membership for one year okay that would be free based on uh, like there's a condition there are conditions like based on the number of uh, hits that you get for your service etc but basically it's free for one year so once you get that like uh, you can uh, do your own uh, hands on and we'll follow those hands on in class as well so there may be like uh, for the middle to see like there may be some constraints where like see uh, what happens is uh, usually when you log into like there are two steps so um, the aws platform when you log in inside with your uh, 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 particular uh, specified user then there are some security details which is shown on screen which uh, like i may have to blank out so like all the steps of the cloud i won't be able to show hands on uh, secondly for the docker containerization so what happens is like we for containerization so they're like uh, like if we give you a uh, brief overview so first of all like when you are working on the studio and you want to generate the year of your application once that is done you go and create an image of it and this image is created using uh, the docker uh, technology using some uh, basic uh, base image of docker so this base image uh, this is a uh, uh, licensed base image that is created by tipco for a specific product version so say uh, i am using uh, the latest one uh, the 2.6.1 of uh, the bwc so tipco will provide a specific uh, base image of docker for the 2.6.1 version that we have to download from the tipco site and the like uh, problem is this comes only for the paid accounts so you cannot uh, download it for free from the tipco account it comes paid for the uh, like paid from the tipco's own e delivery site uh, for like just uh, if i take a step back so like before coming to this step also like uh, for following the general hands on since i am assuming uh, zero familiarity i am also assuming that you may not have the software with you to do the hands on so what i do is like after the initial uh, sessions initial first two sessions uh, when i clear the concepts and like uh, the steps to install the product i'll give you a link uh, which will have the tipco's uh, downloadable uh, software so you can register on that link if you already don't have an account if you have an account that is fine you can use that as well and you can download the tipco um, products the bw6 bwc then some as any associated products you would need you can now ems uh, rv you can download those and you can get it installed on your system so it's a trial version of three months but like in my experience even after three months you can continue using it so uh, based on that link you can download the installers you can install the product yourself and like you can follow the uh, sessions on the class now coming back to our original uh, discussion this deployment so aws as i said like it provides a free tier and docker is also free so whatever steps i do in class 
you can follow those steps yourself so these steps whatever i do they are also marked in the slide which i will be sharing so if you follow the slides step by step you will be able to do exactly the same thing that i am doing in class that is you are you can like uh, create your own image you can go uh, um, like configure that aws in a local system uh, there is a cli available so you can use that and push your image from docker to the uh, cloud platform and you can see your image uh, on the cloud platform okay Yeah. Uh, so my my next question is like uh, right now you are doing in a, uh, AWS. So other cloud platform we can use like Azure also and Google Cloud. Right. We can use uh, multiple cloud platforms as well as like uh, sometimes what clients prefer is they can use they they can set up their own uh, cloud platform in their uh, like on premise. Uh, but like the basic uh, format would be the same. So when I say basic format, like the basic format is like for the initial steps, like uh, after you create the year, the way you uh, create the image using Docker and the way you like configure the CLI. So like each of these uh, cloud products, the like GCP, then Azure, uh, the, even the OpenShift from Red Hat, uh, the, um, along with AWS, all of them uh, have a very similar working when it like comes to the like deployment of an application to cloud so they each of them have their cli which you download there is a particular format in which you uh, configure that cli then you log into the docker using that cli and push that docker image using the same or similar set of commands to the cloud platforms okay so the commands may differ a bit but overall it's the same thing so till the point uh, when you are uh, creating the image and pushing your image to the cloud platform that is common for all these cloud platforms so any of them taken as a, as a sample would do the thing which differs is how you work or how the working uh, changes once you deploy on the cloud okay so that would be uh, the cloud vendor specific so whichever cloud you specify or you uh, like uh, your client uh, chooses to work with the internal workings after you deploy on the cloud that will differ but the steps leading to uh, like deployment of your application on the cloud they would be common to all the platforms so that is why like since as a pipco developer we are expected to deploy like uh, deploy our, like application to the cloud so that's our uh, like responsibility after that it's the cloud team which takes over so this course doesn't cover the cloud details but it will definitely cover the in between steps that is whatever are needed for creating an image and pushing that image to the cloud. Okay, so that would be similar for all the uh, cloud uh, providers. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you. Yes, okay, not a problem. Uh, anyone else, any other doubts? Yeah, I wish you uh, Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, similar yes. to BWI, right? There will be six and C can be used for any integration. I mean, integration of any systems, right? It cannot be only cloud, right? No, no. Uh, so when we say deployment on cloud, it's not an integration of cloud. Okay. So it can be used like definitely uh, whatever functionalities was there in BW5 goes and along with this, some more uh, uh, like integrations you can get. For integration, basically, like uh, you have say two ways. Okay, so since uh, like six and C, they are based on the Eclipse. So, like what used to happen in BW5 was like say suppose uh, you want to connect to a very uh, legacy system, say AS400. Okay, uh, so for that you would need for for Tipco to connect to the AS400 database, you would need specific drivers and like in general those are not supported so what you would need is you would need some sort of plugin from issued by tipco which will install and then that would help you to custom interact with the uh, legacy system or suppose you want to connect with a very uh, modern system say uh, with mongodb so in that case again if you're working on bw5 you would wait for tipco to release some sort of plugin 
uh, which you can uh, install and then that will help you to custom interact with that particular uh, system. In BWC or six, uh, basically we have a lot of uh, these plugins. So these are called uh, the connectors. Okay, and like if you uh, have uh, a paid account or if you have if you're using your company account you, you can see that for bw6 and c they have a huge amount of connectors okay to connect into various systems so one approach can be that you can for integration you can download the plugin like say for the salesforce if you want to join uh, connect to salesforce you can download the tipco certified salesforce plugin then install it and like that will introduce some um, uh, palettes in your uh, system and you can use that in the studio uh, to connect to uh, sensors okay that can be one way the other way it would be like say you are connecting to say as 400 and since as 400 is a very legacy uh, type of database you are like do, you don't uh, get the, those um, connectors so what you can do is you can create your own custom java code since it's an eclipse basically at the back end so you can create your own custom java code for uh, creating a connection connecting to the as 400 and you can use that java code in your code itself to make the custom connection okay so in this case like it uh, like enhances the scope of the developer you are not entirely dependent on a tip code to release an official plugin if you want you can create your own plugin also and you can uh, connect to the particular uh, system okay so integration wise it's uh, like the extension of whatever you got in bw5 and 6 uh, the cloud portion comes only for the deployment okay so like uh, on a very high level if i try to explain so like uh, deployment uh, usually like earlier what used to happen was clients uh, if you can if you see the bw5 deployments so clients were happy to deploy their application in their own premise that is in their own system which had their own server so client used to buy some servers uh, set those up set the uh, like basic softwares and you used to like install your applications on those servers so that would run in the client system itself so the client team would be responsible for maintaining of those servers and if there are any issues the client uh, platform team would uh, take care of it for cloud it's basically uh, like the same set of servers but those servers are not managed by the client any longer so what happens is like these cloud platforms aws uh, google they have a huge amount of uh, servers and huge amount of storage uh, warehousing okay so they they are specializing in this portion only like they are specializing only in the deployment part so they offer you like you uh, uh, contract where you can buy say uh, any number of servers that you want in number of servers basically it's not servers for cloud it's basically uh, the clusters you can buy a number of clusters which have which may have a number of nodes and like you can deploy your applications instead of your uh, local servers that is on the client client uh, premise you can deploy on the cloud platform so the deployment mode will change but for the integration it will remain the same so even when your application is deployed on cloud it will interact with the it can interact with the same set of systems okay so we usually have uh we usually like very uh rarely we have a pure uh cloud deployment scenario or a pure uh like on premise deployment nowadays we have a, a hybrid of uh, these deployments so hybrid system means that part of the client application part of the applications deployed are on a client uh, network that is the critical systems which the client uh, isn't uh, like uh, inclined to expose to the external uh, cloud platform and some of the customer facing applications those are deployed on cloud so the main uh, like benefit of deploying on cloud is the availability and the scalability so availability means that uh, whenever like say uh, whatever uh, like there are two concepts basically for the cloud so one is the desired state one is the current state so when you deploy your application on the cloud you define a current state that is 
uh, you define a desired state. That is, say, uh, you say my application, I want four instances of it running, irrespective of like whatever be the situation on your site. So if you give such a specification, the cloud will always try to follow your specification. That is, it will always try to have four replicas of that particular service up and running. Suppose one of the application instances dies. Okay, it's called uh, containers and pods in the cloud uh, terminology. So suppose one of the pod dies. So what happens is like uh, while checking the cloud uh, manager, it checks it and found finds that uh, one of the application instances in the pod has died. So it will start up another node and assign that particular um, application there. So that means whatever be the situation, if one of the nodes, that is one of the like uh, application instances dies, the cloud manager will again automatically start up another one so that the current state of your application, that is four instances running, would match your desired state that you have specified while deployed. Okay. So that is availability. That is the client can be assured that it's applications are available like required number of application instances are available all through okay and second is scalability so scalability like uh, say uh, the client has purchased a uh, one cluster with two nodes uh, say during this uh, second quarter okay when there is like suppose it's a little client and there is no rush right now so once it comes to the year end there will be rush so the client may have to scale up so in case like if it was a uh, local deployment, then the client would have to like thinking of the spike it will uh, see at the end of the year. It will have to like say uh, for the catering of the traffic, it will say five servers. So it will have to buy and set up five servers and maintain five servers all throughout. So in the lean periods, like only may uh, the traffic will be sufficient for one server and the other four servers would be like, basically wasted Here what the client can opt is like in the lean period it can opt for only two nodes in a single cluster As soon as the load increases it can immediately switch up uh, switch up and scale up to say five nodes and Once the demand goes down it can again scale down to two nodes So that flexibility is here and that is one of the main uh, benefits of using this cloud platform. Okay, so from the integrations perspective, nothing changes. Only the thing that changes is where you deploy and how that deployment is managed. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, anybody else? Any other questions? Oh, yeah. yeah, I got sure. a question. Uh, for, the, for the development, um, um, uh, the studio is, is common for both 6 and CE. Let's say I have the studio for 6 or 6. Uh, will it be the same for the development of CE as well? Uh, development wise, 6 and CE are uh, like more or less similar. Okay. More or less means around, say, 95% similar. So, whatever things you have, whatever palettes you have, the way you work on BW6, the same things you can do in BWC as well. Also, yeah, uh, like Abhishek, uh, sorry to disturb. So, can we use, see if we have BW6 software? Can we use uh -huh. the same for CE development as well? That business studio, or it would there will be a separate uh, software for CE? No, uh, so let me give you a background of this. So, like, uh, the C 6 and C they were introduced around uh, say 2014 or 15. Okay. The early version so i worked on that also as well so what at that time what used to happen was like we used to have two softwares so six was entirely for deploying on app space that is on the on-premise and c was entirely for deployment on the cloud okay so these were two different uh, like very similar softwares but two different sets okay so if you want to deploy, if you wanted to deploy on cloud, you would have to start working on the 6C studio only. And if you wanted to deploy on uh, this on-premise, you you had to start working from initial means from the start using the BW6 studio only. Okay, that was the initial uh, story. Now uh, from 
uh, 6.5 onwards and uh, into in uh, bw uh, in bwc it's uh, around 2.4.5 version onwards what they have used is they have actually merged the studios okay so what the benefit is like it's the same studio now for bw6 and c and they have introduced a thing which is called a deployment target okay so deployment target basically is an optional uh, like uh, radio checkbox that you can select specific to your uh, particular project. So each project, which is basically called an application module, so each application module can be set to the deployment target of either app space, uh, container, or typo cloud. So this once you set this deployment target, uh, you can use the same thing in six and C. So suppose say today I am starting to work. Okay, uh, let me open the studio. Okay, uh, I'll like to clarify this better. So I'm opening a BW6 studio for now. So we have two IDs, but um, we can create uh, both six and C from uh, one ID, right? Yeah, from a single studio, we can create a project and we can decide which uh, deployment mode we need to take. Okay. So, as I said, the development would be same in six and C. The only difference comes when it comes to deployment. And for deployment, like you cannot uh, like rely entirely, like as for the current uh, setup, you cannot rely entirely end to end on six studio or the C studio. So based on the deployment, you'll have to take that particular studio, but the development part would be the same. Uh, so like, as I was saying, like say for example, say we start developing our pro uh, project in BW6 Studio. Okay, uh, we develop that project, complete that project, and uh, test that project. So everything is done from the development side. Now we want to uh, we like we want to decide where we want where where we are going to deploy. Okay. So uh, for deploying, so this from six point five onwards. Uh, they have introduced this deployment target. Okay, if you right click on this uh, application module, so you see inside the configure, you have a deployment target. So as I said, like this is a, a checkbox. So you can select one or multiple combinations of these three. Okay, and these actually denote your uh, deployment target. That is where which platform you are going to deploy in. So app space, if you choose only app space, that means your project that you have created, that will be uh, like compatible to be deployed on the on-premise structure that is using TEA. If you deselect this and choose container instead, this will mean that uh, this particular uh, application or this particular code, this will uh, be uh, customized or compatible to be deployed on the cloud platform only as a container. And if you even deselect this and choose the Tipco cloud, then your application would be made compatible to be deployed on the Tipco cloud. Okay. So I said compatible so that would mean like uh, this app like if once you complete your development and you are deciding on a deployment then comes the deployment target part and based on whatever you select you accordingly go and deploy in that particular platform okay now for that actual development or uh, actual deployment okay uh, tipco has still maintained two different sets of products so for BW6, it has given some utilities which are like, uh, if I name a few, that would be the BW uh, admin utility, 
then BW agent utility. So these are two uh, two utilities which are absolutely necessary to deploy your application on the on premise. Okay, so these two utilities are present only in BW6 installation folder. On the other hand, for the cloud deployment, you need the uh, Docker image. Okay, and that for the Docker image, as I said, like what we have to download first a base image and that base image we can download from the tipo site only for the specific bwc product but that base image is restricted only to bwc product so tipco doesn't have doesn't allow or doesn't create a base image for bw6 uh, products and similarly tipco doesn't provide the bw admin and bw agent utility for the bwc products so what happens is if you are a developer starting to you can develop in any studio whatever you have say you have bw6 license you can start developing on bw6 studio if you have bwc license you can start developing on bwc studio once your development is complete and you decide on the deployment target if say you are working on bw6 studio and you choose this container as your deployment mode then you'll have to export your product project and import it into the bwc studio and thereon use that uh, base image which is downloaded from tipco for that particular version of bwc to generate your uh, image okay on the contrary if you're starting to develop on the bwc studio and you choose this app space as your deployment target you have to export your product project from the bwc studio bring it to the bw6 studio and once it is in the bw6 studio you generate the year and then use the bw admin and the bw agent utilities to deploy this on the app space okay so that means development you can do in any studio but if you are work if you like uh, are concerned for the de uh, deployment then app space deployment is only can only be done like actual end to end deployment can only be done from the bw6 studio and the rest to the container and the tipco cloud actual deployment can be done using that bwc studio okay so this deployment part tipco has still kept separate but development part it's the same so we can start with anyone but as I said, like uh, when I give you the link of that uh, free Tipco portal, you'll see that you can get licenses for both the products. So I suggest you will download both these products and like use those side by side. Okay. Yeah, I wish you container and Tipco cloud both will be used for deploying in the cloud, right? Then why do we have two here? Yeah. Different. What so, is the right. So container here, this means uh, you are going to deploy on a generic cloud platform, a non-TIPCO generic cloud platform, which may be Microsoft, Google, AWS, uh, Red Hat, whatever. But for these, as I said, like the steps are common. So for each of them, like uh, each of these platforms, when you want to deploy, the first step is you have to create the image. Second is you have to download the CLI of that particular uh, cloud platform and then configure that CLI and push your image to that cloud platform. Okay, so all those generic cloud platforms are covered in this container deployment target. If you want to deploy on uh, the Tipco cloud platform, so that is Tipco cloud means Tipco's own cloud platform which uh, like allows some customizations so if you are since you are deploying from the bwc studio and you are pushing to the bwt to the tipco cloud so these steps like this image creation this containerization this pushing of that image specifically these things are not required for the tipco cloud so you only require like some custom some basic customizations and you can directly push your application or the application year to the typical cloud okay so the procedures for deployment are different 
in this case and in the case of the container so that is why we have two different deployment targets okay okay thank you yeah okay yeah, uh, so one update. So, like, uh, just as uh, tell my ping me. So, uh, Muthu, Anand, and Gopi, uh, if you're on the call, uh, could you please respond to uh, uh, clear my? So, probably she doesn't have your uh, contact details. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, so, uh, so did, I, did I paste the contact details in the chat? Yeah, uh, you can reply on this chat itself. So they will get, like clear yeah. is on the call. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll get your uh, details. Okay, hey, hi, Aparna. Yes, so EMS and JDBC concepts, yes, I will cover. So EMS, con no, uh, specifically speaking, so EMS concepts uh, are a different thing. Uh, I will cover uh, like if you need the EMS details basics. So I'll cover the basics of EMS like whatever is required for like in, uh, interacting from the Tipco studio, but uh, like EMS concepts, they are uh, like a separate uh, material itself, a separate course itself. Okay, so I won't be able to cover uh, the EMS details in like EMS. Uh, uh, sessions in details, but definitely like whatever is required and specifically like I will cover as a part of this course and cover the EMS uh, like uh, Palettes that we have and in, with in that respect like whatever concepts are needed. I will definitely cover those two Okay uh, Coming so, to the JDBC uh, uh, we yeah. say, uh, so Is there any difference between uh, TIPCO EMS from TIPCO BW or TIPCO 6 or it is same? <laughs> Uh, no uh, difference like uh, there is a version difference basically like eight, still 8.4 we use for tipco bw5 and mm -hmm. for bwc or 6 we use the 8.5 version onwards okay so that's some difference but working wise it's the same thing like same uh, sets of commands would be used and uh, like you can use a tipco admin and create the queues and etc in the same manner so as far as the ems goes ems hasn't changed but from the typical side like from the studio there is some changes like uh, here unlike the bw5 we don't have two sets of palettes one for queues and one for topics so we have composite uh, activities here uh, which with uh, drop downs which can be used both for queues and topics and along with that since like this is uh, like uh, eclipse based so there is a like uh, concept of conversations which maintain sessions okay so that is something that has been introduced in some of the uh, ems product ems uh, palettes okay so these are the two basic uh, major changes but other than that you will see that most of the palettes are like the same thing as bw5 and using the same uh, concepts as well uh, so like in this uh, training you will uh, uh, like say like what are the changes uh, is there in, in tip 5 and tip 6 until that one you can yes. share or you will not share that thing also no uh so i will give the comparison okay so like uh, in my courses what i do is i regularly draw references from bw5 mm -hmm. uh, because like to understand the difference uh, i may not be uh, covering the bw5 details uh, five uh, features in details but whatever is needed for the comparison purpose like this comparison purpose comes uh, more like less in the ems area more in the service area okay because service like it's entirely different it's the same thing being implemented in five and six but like in an entirely different way so for that service creation this comparison becomes important so i will do that and wherever it's necessary i will uh, like try to point that out but we definitely won't be like dealing with the bw5 uh, the designer oh okay yeah got it okay. thank you yeah right but like whatever uh, like comparison you need whatever details you need that definitely i will share okay cool. yeah. and up and, uh, right so coming back to your question so uh, apart from ems uh, for the jdbc concepts yeah jdbc concept wise like jdbc palettes concepts i will definitely provide but again like 
I cannot con like I don't have a um, uh, database installed. I can show you like uh, the steps if you want. I like in the slides I can give you the steps of the basic steps of the like, creation. So what like for JDBC whatever is needed is first of all the driver installation, and second is connect to the database using the database uh, like uh, activities. So from the BW perspective, based on whatever activities we have in BW. I will cover all those activities differently. And for the driver creation, we will anyways have a particular session which will involve like uh, installation of the JDBC drivers, of uh, the EMS drivers, and custom JDBC driver installation. Okay. So these parts I will definitely cover. And obviously, what are the connector you will cover in this training? Uh, uh, connectors, uh, see connectors is it's difficult to cover first of all like for both you and me uh, the main problem is as i said like it's only the connectors are only available for the paid account okay so mm -hmm. connectors basically what they are, are basically plugins so it's basically it comes with an installer you install that and you see a new set of um, uh, palettes in your uh, studio and you can use those palettes okay so since connectors are customs uh, I won't be able to like cover those. So if you want, if you like, if you have say requirement for a particular connector, if you need for your project purpose or for some other need, I can cover that on a conceptual basis. But for hands on, that will be difficult. First of all, because I like don't have a paid account, so I cannot download the connectors. Secondly, like if I even if I get a hold of an old connector, like that may not work with the latest version. Okay, so that's the main constraint of like uh, dealing with connectors but yes if you have any particular connector requirement if you can provide me any specific details i will definitely try to provide a, like on a conceptual basis like whatever is needed to work with the connector so like uh, if i have a requirement of adb adapters like we are using tipco 5 and we need to migrate to tipco 6 so that right. document can you provide or uh, yes so there i will like you see that won't be a like plain um, word document or something so what i will do is like adb and if you like say but if it is a tipco specific plugin then i'll mm -hmm. try to provide you the steps as well like whatever is needed to work on the adb adapters those step by steps illustrations with the slide that thing i will provide but if say like it's a connector say a salesforce connector then that mm -hmm. would be difficult to like uh, provide on a like on a conceptual basis also because like you'll have to i'll have to go into each of these palettes and see okay so that will be difficult but if it's a typical specific like as i see as you said adapter uh the adp adapter or the sap adapter, then that i can provide in, in some detail oh no other other like uh, plugins that is not uh like uh, complex but uh, like adb and sap adapters a lot of configuration you need to do that's why i, I was asking yes. right so like as i said like if it's a tipco specific uh, plugin say like these adapters sap adapters or the adp adapters then i'll be able to give you the configurations as well because i have already like it since it is tipco i have already like have an exposure to that so i can give you but if it comes like if if say for your project purpose you need to connect to say marketo or to say salesforce they would have their own set of uh, like uh, palettes okay so i have not worked on those and i don't have a like option to download those and check how those like individual palettes work so that will be difficult for like those uh, like offbeat connectors but adb adapters like whatever is tipco that you can register sure that i'll provide you like uh, generic guidance so that you can start working okay yeah got it uh, so basically like whatever is in my power like whatever i can get i will definitely show you yeah that's okay. fine right so yeah so anyone else any other uh, questions any doubts so you may not have doubt today but like if you say have doubts say uh, one or two days later also you can uh, connect with clear my or visual path and like uh, they will try to set up a session with me to like clear your concepts or like clear your doubts 
so anything you have even today or like say later also you can connect with me and i'll try to like clear whatever uh, you need okay so if you don't have any other questions then i think we can uh, end the session today so it was a like very good session like i, I must say because like uh, interactive session is always the best so in my sessions my actual classes also i in, encourage this type of uh, like interaction so like whatever you require feel free to ask for it and whatever i can provide i'll try to provide to my best uh, possibility like whatever i can so be rest assured like whatever you need uh, i'll try to take care of it if it is uh, like in my power and if it is related to tipco rest assured 99 percent i will be definitely providing you some guidance on it Okay. even if like it's not strictly part part of our bw course okay then uh thanks everyone for joining uh have a nice day